Hi guys, it's Amy. Today I'm going to talk about the shank. And once you start shanking, basically you get mentally traumatized, right? So today I'm going to break down why shank happens and show you drills to help get rid of it. When you're hitting the golf ball, basically you want to hit the ball off the sweet spot, right? But when you're shanking, you're missing the club face completely and you're hitting the ball off the neck or the hosel part and a severe miss shot happens, you hit it maybe like 80 degrees right and it feels horrible and it's called a shank. And to fix the shank, I know you've seen this drill a lot, you take a head cover, you place it either above the ball or below the ball and you're working on fixing your body angles and your hand action, your swing plane and your club face orientation. But as usual, I'm going to take you through Amy style, approach it from a completely different angle and help you get rid of your shank forever. When you're hitting the golf ball, the basic concept is to use the body as main control and bring that arm and the club down so you compress the ball, right? But when you're shanking, you're using both the body and your arms as main source of control. You've seen a lot of amateurs that use 100% of the arms to be their main control. When you do this, you're actually basically uh, losing power and accuracy, but you have full control over the club face. So you are able to make contact with the ball on the club face. But if you're using both body and the arms, downswing happens so fast and you have barely any control of your club face and the club face hasn't even initiated to release. So that way you're not able to catch the ball on your club face, but you catch it more in the neck or the hosel. Okay, and also when you're using the body and the arms at the same time, your body angles, your hand action, and the swing plane, club face orientations get really out of whack. So that's why today I'm going to have to divide the lesson in two. Today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to get the club face traveling straight, square, on plane, with the correct hand positions and with the correct club face orientation. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the body properly to get that body to be the main control of the golf swing and help you get rid of that shank forever. So a lot of you guys that start shanking, when you take a look at your takeaway, a lot of you guys start flipping way too much. Um, so if you're flipping open the face in the starting part of the swing, that means you have to flip it back over to try and get it square. And if there's a lot of motion in your hands and the club face, then that means there's less chances you're gonna go into the ball square, right? So we're trying to get the club face traveling more square throughout the whole swing. And so if I start talking about this, your arm action and your club head, your swing plane, your body action have to all kind of connect and be synchronized. So it seems very complicated, but I can show you one great drill you can do to try and get everything under control. We're gonna start without the club first. So those of you who flip around a lot, if you're hitting right-handed and you are right-handed, then you tend to use 100% of the left hand pressure to flip back and flip through. So I usually teach my students to try and use 100% of the right hand to try and even it out, which is exaggerating. But if you feel like you're using 100% of the right hand to a third person's eye, it's going to look like 50-50 pressure and you're using both hands in perfect sync. Okay, so you're gonna set up with the right hand, palm is facing the target. We're gonna go in four steps, okay? Number one, we're gonna go straight back, try and keep that palm facing the target as much as possible. Number two, you're gonna fold your wrist about five to 10 degrees. Number three, you're gonna use your left oblique to rotate and then you're gonna get into that position where the palm is 45 degrees from the ground and feels like you're supporting a big plate. And then number four is you're gonna use your right oblique to push through so the palm is facing the target. If you're flipping around in the first part, you're going to flip your hands right away. So your palm is going to face forward. From here, the swing plane has gone inward too much you can't rotate from here anymore and you have to lift when you have lifted you can't really push through you're gonna kind of spin out and then you flip through this way so your body will stop moving in the downswing so i want you to try and really exaggerate palm to the target straight back fold we don't want to rotate we want to fold so the palm is facing the ground turn push once you get comfortable with these four positions we're going to try and do the exact same thing with the club in our hands if you've seen my grip video, you probably understand that the palm 
orientation and the club face orientations match. They're both looking at the target. So you can either go off of the club face or the palm here or both when you're doing this, okay? So we're gonna have the face and the palm facing the target and we're gonna go straight back. It's going to feel very hooded, very closed. From here, we're gonna go five to 10 degrees fold. That's the hinging. And from here, left oblique turns, supporting the club, club face is 45 degrees, that's square at the top. And then we're gonna go right oblique push, face the target, this is what we want. So we're gonna start hitting the golf ball, but since we're focusing on four new movements, we're gonna go ahead and tee up the golf ball so that way you don't focus on hitting the ball, but focus on the four things. We're gonna take it slow, like 30% speed and focus on what we're trying to improve. Okay, so we're gonna go straight back, fold, turn, push, full swing. So when you start doing this, in the second part, when you fold and you hinge, the club face orientation is going to be slightly closed. When the arm is pointing at eight o'clock, the toe is supposed to be pointing at the sky, that's a square position, but, a lot of tour professionals actually prefer a slightly closed position in this uh, spot right here. That's because if it's slightly closed, then there's less rotation of the club head and the hands. When there's less movements, then there is a lot higher control over the club face and the hands. There, so there's higher probability the club face is gonna come in square to impact, even if your rhythm's slightly off. So we like higher probabilities of hitting it great, right? All right, and then on the way down, since you have your, your club is a lot more online line and correct spot now you're coiled well now you're able to push through your body will be able to push through way more than before the hands won't flip through your face will be more square that way you can compress the ball better with a lot of power once you're ready once you're comfortable with that 30 percent speed we're gonna go ahead and swing it full So you will definitely feel the body powering through the ball better. I want you to really get comfortable with the four positions in your swing. That way you have your arms and your body, your swing plane, your club face orientation under perfect control. Once you get better in this, in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you exactly how to move your body so it becomes your main control of the swing. That way we can really get that shank out of your system. I hope you're able to follow along. If you have any questions, please come to Ask Amy section and leave your questions there. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.